of the ancient Silk Roads. More than 2,000 years ago, this network of roads brought together two civilizations that were thousands of miles apart. Silk from China was loved by Roman aristocrats. And what we see right here is the mandolin. Originated in the Central and West Asia, it made its way to China through the Silk Road and evolved into pipa, one of the most popular musical instruments for the Chinese imperial court and everyday people. Wow. Welcome to Dunhua, a place that witnessed the convergence of diverse cultures. Exotic elements can be seen everywhere in murals of the Mogao Caves. And these figures right here are wearing clothing with unique Western and Central Asian characteristics. Isn't that amazing? Take Cave 285, for example. The murals depict images of Fuxi and Nuwa, the widely known ancestors of mankind in Chinese mythology. You can also find the Taoist god of thunder and flying Apsaras from India. Look, Zhang Qian is also featured here. A pioneer of the Silk Road, his two voyages to the western regions have laid the foundation for the communication and blending of various nationalities. Behind me right here is the Big Wild Goose Pagoda. It was built to preserve the Buddhist groves brought back to Chang'an, or today Xi'an, by Master Xuanzang. He brought back vast amount of Buddhist sutras and translated over 1,300 volumes of Buddhist scriptures. Master Xuanzang also wrote this great town records on the Western regions, which is an encyclopedia of the ancient West and India. In the Tang Dynasty, along with trade, came profound cultural exchanges between China and the West. Women began to wear hu clothing, nomadic dresses worn by people in northern and western regions. The light of cultural exchanges continued to shine through in the following Song and Yuan dynasties. Then, as the Maritime Silk Road rose in prominence during the Ming Dynasty, the world became more closely interlinked. This shift was marked by Zheng He's voyages to the West. Zheng He brought advanced production technologies on his missions, which enabled Chinese migrants to survive and thrive on foreign land. They were also crucial to economic development in Southeast Asia. The thousand-year-old ancient Silk Road can find its modern-day glory as it was renewed a decade ago. In 2013, China proposed the Belt and Road Initiative. Countries on board have done a remarkable job in the excavation, research, and protection of cultural relics. And in 2016, the Palace Museum of China conducted joint archaeology projects with Durham University of the UK with a special focus on Chinese porcelain unearthed in the Middle East, Europe, and the Indian Ocean region. China has also signed culture and tourism agreements with 142 countries under the Belt and Road Framework. And don't forget the big screen. The Silk Road Film Festival has been held annually for nine years. It's become an important exchange platform for global filmmakers. Spanning the Eurasian continent for millennia, the Silk Road has always been a symbol of exchange and sharing. It connected peoples and cultures and helped transcend differences that kept the world apart. <laughs>